Vodafone presents the pre-match. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to ESL One Katowice. We are here in the Cologne ESL offices. There's a lot of wonderful people back there working behind us, but we are here to watch some Dota 2, our first best of three of the upper bracket. And it's going to be Fnatic versus Gambit. Base Kip, Lacoste, Lyrical, your casters for this one. How are you guys feeling? Fnatic got to remind themselves that this this game is important. This is this is serious now again. Wow. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes momentum wise. Gambit. I mean, it was a little while ago, but they did just lose 2-0 earlier in the day. Uh, Fnatic took a pretty convincing game one win, and then they've sort of been cruising. So we'll see how it goes. Gambit would definitely be sitting there watching the yeah. the Fnatic game 100. percent Yeah, and it's our first best of three. So yes. things get different. The way they pick, the way they uh, play the game, even if you're one, one game down, yeah. there's, you need to pull out something big to yeah. get a win. We have five Fnatic members already in-game. They're ready to go. Gambit, step it up, man. The nice thing about best of threes is you can actually try and beat something. Right? You can try and intentionally let something through in the first game yeah. if you feel like you have a strategy that's really good against it. And then... If you lose that one game, that's not the end of the world necessarily. Compared to the, even though we had two game series all the way through the group stages, as we saw with what happened with NIP uh, Chaos with the tiebreakers, every single game was so important. So you couldn't really afford to mess around uh, at all unless well, you're already first. Exactly, unless you're a fanatic, pretty much. Um, and we'll, we should talk a little bit about what we should expect then, because both of these teams had very specific strategies that they attempted to run. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at what Fnatic was doing, the Shadow Shaman, the Juggernaut, that was banned out against them earlier on. And then you have on the other side Gambit, the Immersion Nyx Assassin was a perennial first pick for them as yeah. well. And so their I, Ursa as well. Do you think that either of those heroes are going to get banned out early on? Do you think that you just try and run, let them run their strat and see if you can beat it? I feel like every single team here prioritize different heroes. Yeah. Uh, let's say Team Secret, they love their Lash, they love their Enigma. Other teams, uh, they're going to go with Shadow Shaman, Elder Titan, uh, what Fnatic is doing. So you, it's better to just ban out what they're playing, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just straight ban out a hero like a Nyx Assassin, which they feel comfortable, Visage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, the ET is going to get banned for sure. I'm not so sure about the Shadow Shaman, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other hand, I don't know if the Nyx Assassin is going to get banned. Maybe the Ursa will. Especially if they want to keep picking Jug. I don't know if Fnatic are going to keep doing that because they had the opportunity uh, in that first game and they picked the Pango right. instead. So what do you guys so. think then about like the, the whole idea of, okay, let's let them play their best thing and we're just going to hope that our strategy is, is better, or think, we think that our strategy is better. Uh, you can afford that in BO3. Yeah. And if yeah. you win that one, then you can also experiment with your own picks, uh, try to go for something uh, cheesy if necessary. But you're playing against Fnatic, so there's always a threat of uh, playing against Meepo. You need to be ready for that, have a, have a matchup, uh, or ban it out, spend one more ban. Yeah. Same goes for Timbersaw. This is the hero that's going to be contested in this series, I think, as well. Mm, Timber. Yummy. Night Stalker was another one that's been around the block a couple of times. Um, he's, he's rising in popularity. Yeah. It's, uh, it is an afterlife hero, I feel like. That guy could play some, uh, some Night Stalker for sure. And he's yeah. sometimes been the, the kind of carry out of the offlane for this Gambit team. Yeah. I want to see his Doom again, maybe. Okay. But a lot of teams are shying away from the Grimstroke slowly. So I wonder with Grimstroke exiting the meta if Doom's going to kind of... Grim Let me tell you, Grimstroke is out. Uh, this <laughs> hero is exiting. bad. This okay. hero is garbage right. right now. I don't know how to, how to, how to insult it, him it's anymore. Not, it's not on the Lacoste approved it's, list. Yeah. I, I don't think you should pick this hero if you want to win a game. The way that you said unplayable right there, it's like when you type into Twitch chat with like a space in between every yeah. letter. <laughs> unplayable. The, the, the mono space. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is kind of how it feels right now, definitely. Uh, but I think also part of the reason that we saw a lot of the Doom was because there was so much Jug and Lifesteal everywhere, which has still proven to be at least a winning formula. In terms of Lifestealer, Jug mm. maybe not quite so much. Yeah. I wonder if Fnatic are going to show uh, Gambit's Chen any respect. They didn't really show any respect to NIP's chant. Didn't feel the need to abandon out. They got it in the second phase. Hashtag no respect. No respect. Rodney what did you call it? Ladder? Ladder? 
What Hashtag, you, what what's you it? What's your say? Pounds, pounds. Pound. All right, all right. <laughs> Pound no respect. Pound no respect. <laughs> it doesn't have. The, it doesn't roll off the tongue in the same way. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not great. It's not amazing. Nine out of ten lobby. That is amazing because it means that the game's going to get started soon. But, What's the big uh, rush, kid? Do you want to hang out with us? I, I just want to see. I, this I, is our last Bo3. Savor it. I'm excited. Every though. every last little bit of Dota. This is actually a matchup I've been waiting for a lot because I think Fnatic have proven to like just run at teams sometimes. And that's Gambit's mm. style. So yeah. I feel like this could be some fireworks yeah. in the Dota. I think it'll be a really cool Dota. It's also going to be really interesting now that we're getting the two groups coming back together, right? Because we talked a lot over the course of the first couple of days. Hey, Group A looks really, really strong. They've got Secret. Group B, maybe not as strong. Looks like Fnatic are going to kind of walk all over it. And now we get to see where, had Fnatic been in that Group A, maybe instead of Gambit, how would they have fared? You know, could could OG have done better if Fnatic had been in the other group? Who knows? Yeah. Well, we're about to find out. Well, and I, again, Secret was able to take down Gambit 2-0, but there were a couple of those games where it looked somewhat close. So I think it would be a good uh, barometer of, of sort of strength of groups in that way. Um, mm. if, if Fnatic can't do it, or if they end up like losing 2-0 to Gambit or something, then it tells us, yeah, those groups really are that far apart, and Secret really is that good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so no, this, this There's a conversation is happening in chat right now, so and, funny. and F and G is like, "Do you want to exchange shirts?" And Ice 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 responds, "Next event, man. Not enough shirt. <laughs> Staying in Europe for boot camp." Oh. And F and G replies, "I will try to qualify." Lol. Fair enough. There you go. That's understandable. Somebody needs to get this man a shirt. That's what needs to happen. Fnatic were offering the Stream A casters free merch on Twitter earlier. Really? Yeah. Fnatic, if you're listening, can what you about B can Stream? You, can you Wait, look what? us up? Yeah, where's where's our free merch? Just send it to to, to ESL offices. I'll, I'll tweet I'll tweet to the Fnatic for sure after during the break or what do between you want? the games. Shirt, what do I want? I'll keyboard, check. I, I love mouse. I love hats. Hats are pretty mouse. cool. Oh, okay. Hats. You don't get to wear them on broadcasts though. That's what do you mean? There, there are chill broadcasts. That's right. We have that those. actually is. Those are nice. Um, well, I think that for me, I'd like a tie, like a, a fanatic. Yeah, tie. I don't think they have those. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can get uh, a hat, uh, a beanie, probably. Okay. Maybe like a jacket. What, cool I jacket. think they have pretty cool swag. Yeah, to what, be honest. What, what merch does fanatic have? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna check this out right now. Yeah. Oh, he's they're they're getting so much free advertising out of us. Ice 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 said in all caps, "We will meet." That is kind of ominous. But it's also good to see like a little bit of casual niceness amongst these guys. FNG and Ice Ice Ice, they've been in the scene forever. I'm sure they've run into each other at a ton of different lands. You guys I'm gonna just be, zoned out looking at other stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to be a bit biased towards Fnatic. Maybe really? I get even more free stuff. Oh, okay, I see how it works. <laughs> Kind you want to get your predictions in now? Like yeah, two zero for Fnatic, for Fnatic yeah, easy. Fnatic duo. <laughs> Three, <laughs> 12 <laughs> minutes game. 12 yeah. minutes games. Yeah, three zero. Yeah. I'm just being realistic, sorry. That's impressive. That's a, that's a hell of a show. Lacoste is always unbiased. Just, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. Because he's trying to, he's angling for free merch. I know, it's definitely true. I'll, I'll get it anyway. Mm. So, enough of the free merch. Okay. We definitely need some Let's talk about this matchup. outfits for you guys because you guys are just paired up together. Yeah, I need, as I need well. a different shirt or something because right. we, we were looking like twins. <laughs> Look at them. It's amazing. <laughs> Who wore it better? Oh, there you go. Pull that one down. I think I wore it better. I should have traded my tie with one of you guys in the break. That would have been the, the play. I think that, your, that I think your tie would look <laughs> huge on either <laughs> of us. So. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah. I don't know. I like your tie clip, though. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. It keeps on getting knocked asunder, though. It's yeah. terrible. It really makes me sad. But you know what? Life will go on, and we almost are going to have the game as well. 10 out of 10. Team's ready. FNG is ready. Let's get this underway. My man, Lacoste. I want to hear it right now. First pick. What's the hero? Who has first pick? Yeah. But, uh, Fnatic. Oh. Where did you see it? It's up so a F and G have second. Uh, the Gambit ah, have yeah, second yeah, pick. Yeah, so. First pick for Fnatic, Shadow Shaman. You think so? Yeah, if it's not banned, I'll, I'll say two. Okay. Elder Titan mm -hmm. is Elder the Titan second Shadow one. Shaman. Yep. Shadow Shaman or Pango. And and we're gonna just finish the draft the whole way through, so we can say what the next ban is gonna okay, be. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is, I don't think this is. A I think we should formula. just wait. That's probably. I'm not a professional play. anymore, but I think we should wait to see what they're gonna pick. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that's the uh, the safe way to play it out. You're so smart, man. You got the little smile there. And we are going to hop into the draft now. Ladies and gentlemen, Five game number eight. one for the upper bracket finals, Fnatic versus Gambit. Fanatics turn to ban. It's going to be cool. Man, they are taking their time already. Look at that. Can't rush. Can't rush Fnatic. So last time we saw Fnatic when they were playing against NIP, they were on Dire holding that high ground by their bottom shrine. And that was pretty much the position where they won the game. And it feels mm -hmm. like that's what we've been seeing more often than not nowadays, is each of the teams just sort of holding one of the four high grounds that exist in Dota now. Because it's pretty much just like those four plateaus, right? By each of the shrines. Yeah, teams have gotten really good at like picking their spots for fights. You'll often see teams standing near a high ground with an observe reward on the high ground, sentries covering both of the ramps and just standing there waiting, trying to get the initiation superiority. Um, people have really, I think, started taking more and more notice about where they fight on the map. Uh, this this new this current version of the map does feel a little bit more open than some of the previous versions. They've removed a bunch of uh, like uphills and downhills, and so like you're saying, uh, the ones that are left end up being exploited more uh, when when the opportunity presents itself. Fnatic are banning. Hashtag the respect. Yeah, there you go. Wow. And the Pangolier will get banned by Gambit. Uh, if they want to get rid of the ET, they're going to have to use their last ban on that hero. Uh, and are Fnatic afraid of the Nyx Assassin at all? They played Ember Spirit in the previous game. Mm. I, I don't feel like that's MP's hero. There was a couple of mistakes Ten made by him. He missed the slide back. into chains, uh, no remnants to, to go back to. Fanatics all right, the ET is gone. Again, just for a little bit of... So maybe no no Nyx Assassin yeah. needed to be banned out. A little bit of context as to what this match means. The winner of this series is guaranteed top four in the tournament. And at the very least, $20,000. But really, the big thing is that it's the, the top four Dying placement. Pick. Feeling good to go into the next tournament and a spot at the potentially grand Serious finals. Serious business. Yeah, Lifestealer man. was still in the pool. Yeah. Why not? He's he's certainly looking better than Jug at this point, so why not just take the Life Stealer? And now Gambit have the choice if they want to take the Shadow Shaman. I I think it would be it, it's tough using your picks to deny pick the enemy team, but remaining. Fnatic have just looked so good with the the Shadow Shaman. Gambit did that against Team Secret with the uh, last rack. Yeah. Lich is good. A lot of physical damage reduction and uh, Ursa as a response to Life Stealer. Mm -hmm. I think this is solid, though. It's it's again, you, you play your style first. Believe in what got you here. And force Fnatic to adjust to you. And the other big thing is like, I mean, it's the Life Stealer, right? Uh, this, this Ursa Ten eats him up. Remaining. Gobble, gobble, yep. gobble. Yeah, well, Five Fnatic can still, still have plenty of picks left to kind of deal with the Urso. We've been seeing him getting kited a little bit. Shadow Shaman. Yeah, Easy just, to kite just, just with. Take it. It's, it, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a really a no-brainer. It's, it's, you really don't have to think about it at all. Unless they wanted to somehow keep like the tiny for DJ open or something, but he just looks phenomenal every time he's playing on this hero. I feel like if Gambit wanted to play Visage, they would uh, grab it first phase instead of Lich. They still have a couple of good position fives in the pool. Uh, mm. First one that comes to my mind that's great against the Life Stealer Bane. This is how Secret responds to this hero. Yep. Have, you have a grip that goes through his rage, you can sleep, whoever he focuses, pretty single oriented hero before he gets Radiant. Lich. Bane feels like kind of an odd support combo. No, no, no. I, I meant oh, the other way around. Bane instead of Lich. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is 
at least uh, some more hard disable with the sinister gaze if you're able to have the initiation in another back. fashion from Gambit. Um, but yeah, I kind of agree about the Visage. It feels like that's an area that Gambit have completely gone away from in their games, where that was what they were playing a lot coming into it, but they haven't as much since they've been here. Yeah. And it did get nerfed a bunch, Right, is the thing. The level six is significantly weaker. Uh, so Fnatic's still banning it out here just in case. It is something that Gambit have run in the past, but Ten you're right. It's not something that they've been going to heavily uh, for this particular event. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Dusa? Have they really been playing Dusa at all? Uh, that's another hero where before this specific tournament, Gambit yeah. drafted it a lot. They're, they're even a team, I think before this event in... Uh, 7.21, so before the B, uh, the B sub patch, they had first picked Medusa, like first phase Medusa seven Ten times. Uh, they've all, they also ban it a lot, but it wasn't really the trend for this event, Fire which is pick. is interesting. Fanatics, Fanatic kind of pick. going off Earth old Spirit. intel, it feels like. And an Earth Spirit. This is actually another one of the heroes that Gambit haven't really played uh, yeah. all that much. And with Ursa pickup, it also denies the Timber Saw pick, which Fnatic likes to play. Mm. Yeah. Do still have to be cautious of remain. the Meepo, potentially. It's always something to watch out for. And Fnatic is going to go for the Undying. Okay. This is, this is a super comfort zone draft for them. Yeah. But uh, Gambit also in that same kind of space and it's just Profit making it pretty late. Wow. So core Profit. Yeah. I mean that or it's like core Earth Spirit, but that doesn't sound all that spectacular. So the Sun Dying looks like he's going to have a pretty good time. I guess you can just overpower and hit the tombstone as well, though. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah. Uh, Undying's not even just about the tombstone. Right. Though I think people Five over focus on that. His laning presence isn't dependent on the tombstone. He's just such a big bully. Uh, and the sustain that he provides with Soul Rip is really, really nice. Is it enough that he doesn't have to worry about an Ursa in lane, do you think? Oh, no. He still has to, he has to worry about Ursa at least a little bit. At least once the Ursa gets some levels. Right. I, I feel like Fnatic wants to try lane with the D3, if possible, secure life stealers early game. And mm -hmm. if you're forcing them to try lane against you, they're gonna lose that try lane because of Undying. Undying so far, seven games, 85% win rate. Oh, this is a good pickup by Fnatic. They, it's a vehicle for a life stealer and uh, they have zero ways to control them. It's hard to land Earth Spirit, stun or mm -hmm. silence on Puck. Oh, yeah. What do you think Fnatic should put... If they do go aggro, what do you want them to have 1v1 against the Prophet? Ten what do you like in that matchup? They I mean, could have that puck. Yeah, it could the, still the, be a the mid puck hero. Do, okay. Could they still pick the... Even though the Ursa is on the field, do you think like the Timbersaw is still playable or not? For Fnatic? Yeah. They could put him in a side lane and just try to match these other three against Ursa, but then we're going to see a lot of swaps. There isn't all that much lockdown for the Timbersaw once you get through that initial uh, laning stage woes of potentially going against an Ursa too. Do you guys like this Nature's Prophet pick uh, here? To me, it feels just a little bit out of place. I see what Gambit are going for with it. They wanted some more building damage, some more push. It fits with their kind of run at you style. That that's core Nature's Prophet, so they yeah. might want to consider fighting into a tri lane against Undying, which in my opinion is never a good choice, but have that Nature's Prophet who can TP, TP and then you outnumber them. Yeah, that's true. They can they can have the 4v3 in the tri lane, or the, the constant threat of the 4v3. Well, last set of bands. It is going to be Fnatic with the first pick in this last round. And looking for either an offlaner or a, a mid here, I think. You could switch up the puck depending on what they want. Is the safety ban just the Meepo here? Do you just, just do that? Like... Fanatics, no. Okay, ban. Beastmaster. I think unless you're... If you, if you feel like you can deal with a Meepo, then you don't want to have to ban it. Uh, True. 
It's not it's not a free Meepo game no. by any means. And I think Glitch is actually even better against Meepo than he used to be, because Sinister Gaze is, is yeah. quite good, and uh, Chain Frost isn't like a hard counter, but it's remaining. annoying to have to play yeah. with, and that Sinister Gaze I think is the biggest thing. Fanatics, turn okay, to pick. Dragonite bands. Dire team pick. Brewmaster. Brewmaster. Okay. So Abed Puck. Or they might uh, go for dual lanes because yeah. they pick a Brewmaster. Depends on the matchup. They're going to see what the Gambit is going to last pick. But uh, Brewmaster, good pickup. There's going to be a lot of chaos. Shadow Shaman dropping boards, Undying Tombstone, Brewmaster with Split, cutting into back lines. Uh, he removes Lich's armor. Yeah, the Dispel Lich's is quite strong seconds. this game. Remaining. Really, really strong lineup from Fnatic. Hmm. Building hitter. I guess they don't. It doesn't need it have, as much it doesn't have to be. I think it needs that. to. It needs to provide a little bit of catch. They might end up going for like. Oh, well, the Kunk is already banned. Hmm. Shadowfin could be a pick. Yeah. All right. Okay. Razor. I thought they might want to group up as uh, five with that uh, Guardian Greaves. This is some strong lane winning Dota coming out from Gambit, it looks like. The last pick Razor now. They really like the, the full Tricor on yeah. Gambit, huh? Like having three scaling heroes. Seems to work out for them well, reasonably well. You see the draft? See the people playing which heroes? How do you guys feel about it? Do you think that uh, either team has come out ahead after this? I'd say Fnatic. I just love yeah. their draft overall. It's going to be so hard to to focus. Lich, uh, Nature's Prophet, uh, Red or Squishy Heroes, and they have a ways to deal with uh, with this Ursa. Only one Silence, mm. plus stun on Earth Spirit Sinister Gaze to one extent, but uh, that means that there's no real threat for Puck in this game, and Brewmaster is always going to get it split off. Yeah. Fnatic just look impossible to team fight into. Yeah. Like, if you get the... You're going to put down the Tombstone, you're going to put down the Master Serpent Wards, Puck's going to Dream Coil somebody to keep them there, the Panda should pretty much always be able to get his ultimate off, and at that point, you've completely lost the team fight. If, you're, Gambit, if your Gambit, there's nothing Yeah, you Gambit can do. will need to outmaneuver them with uh, either outnumbering them with Nature's Prophet or Smoke Blaze. Uh, it's yeah. it's going to be a hard, hard game for Gambit from what I see. Yeah. Okay. Or Split Push, Force a TP then go take a 4v5, something like that. And, and then as far as like the lanes go, I mean, this does kind of feel like you guys are talking about a lot of team fight oriented things that happen after that laning phase. Do you think that Gambit at least has the edge there taking the Ursa and the Razor, or do you not think so? Depends if they lane Ursa against this life stealer, or if Fnatic tries to dodge it, keep swapping uh, mid lane. Should be fine for Puck. Uh, Maybe it's going to be Razor against uh, Puck. We saw, mm. who was it? OG, right? Yeah. Thompson was playing the exact same matchup. It was not very effective, but uh, Thompson played extremely, extremely greedy. Uh, Try to get go for a courier snipe, and then he was out leveled and out farmed. Yeah. I think this early game really comes down to whether or not Immersion can get very many kills. He's picked up the Orb of Venom first on the Earth Spirit. He's not nearly as effective as a hero in just sitting in the lane compared to the Undying. Like, if the lanes are static, then I think uh, that's a big advantage for Fnatic. But if Immersion can successfully find a kill or two, get some levels, and keep on moving, then uh, Gambit's lanes do actually look fairly good. But I don't think it's, like... A clear advantage one way or the, or the other. Fnatic this also have strong lanes. You have do. Undying, yeah. who's yeah. a lane winner. You have Shadow Shaman with Boots of Speed. It's not going to be that easy to catch. He's naturally very slow. So Fnatic just trying to scout out what the Gambit is doing to set their lanes correctly. Sure, they avoid all the bad matchups. Yeah, I, I will say that I think I'd like to see the Ursa go for an early Blink Dagger. I know we've been seeing much more of like the phase boots into Midas, but the combination of having Immersion on this long initiation hero is looks like Ursa's gonna go for the body blocks and the rune pickup. Easy peasy, Gambit get three. Um, but what I was saying is I, I think like you roll in with the Earth Spirit and then blink immediately afterwards by the Hawk on top of anybody, and they're probably gonna die uh, if you can get that slow silence off. 
Yeah, I would prefer to see Gambit just... I Like you're saying, I know that the Midas on Ursa has been pretty pretty common, and it is certainly a hero that, similar to the Lifestealer, can fight without too many items, but to me, this game, the, the Blink Dagger looks like it's just going to get a lot done. And like we were saying, they need to get pick off so that they can stop Fnatic from gripping up. Early pushing out there. And Afterlife going to try and deal with this Undyne in his face, in his face. Yeah, and I love the build on Undyne. Even though he's position five, Stout Shield, because he knows he's going to lane against Nature's Prophet and all those Treants to mitigate those right clicks. Oh, they roll on him, Jabs. Taking a lot of damage, but I mean, Undyne is the king of being able to sustain in these lanes. Got a double decay there. And has another decay in a second. This is not going to be a good time for Immersion or Afterlife. Well, that does mean that up top lane, it's going to be Ursa Lich versus the Shadow Shaman and that Brewmaster. While well, they keep on battling down here in the bottom lane, that health bar for the Nature's Prophet getting lower and lower and lower. They don't really have kill potential. Lifestealer needs to have open wounds on level 2, even if he gets it. They still lack damage. Undying already running low on mana, has one mango left. Immersion. With uh, I was just kidding roll. <laughs> nah, he's got that Orb of Venom here on Immersion. Double damage for Puck. That's going to be huge for this matchup, even though Puck is doing uh, well in the early stage. 7 2 against 6 3. Oh, Afro Ninja is going to get that Observer Ward. Just need to be careful. That's so much damage, uh, but we'll salve up afterwards. I love the build on Puck. Two points in Vanning Rift. No points in phase shift. He wants to play aggressive. That's a good bit of damage if that Razor's not careful. He won't be expecting it. Nope. Can use the Waning Rift instead of the Orb to secure CS. And he's going in for this one. Ah, uh, Ninja forced back yet again. Saving that Waning Rift. Forcing him to buy another salve. This is potentially a kill pot opportunity here. I don't think Afro Ninja knows that this is two points in Waning Rift yet. What if it balanced double damage? Uh... Earlier, pick up less duration, and then it increases as time goes by. Pretty cool. Could do. Oh, the dive forward, Apple Ninja, stealing some damage and able to fairy fire through it, staying alive. Salve up afterwards, but first blood is going to be picked up by Immersion. Oh, he tried to uh, deny suicide. The, yeah, deny the deny. Double deny. DJ. He is not going to be denied as he eventually gets taken down by the Hawk. So two early kills there for Gambit. Not a place to be for Shadow Shaman. We said that Fnatic's lanes were good, but Gambit's also very solid. Though I don't know if that, like, the kill on the Undying is nice, but it's, it's like not a normal laning kill. It's more just no. the jabs is being trying to maximize efficiency and kind of got punished for it and realizes that what he was coming past the ward, I suppose, as he was on his way to the tier two. Immersion a little bit off the mark there with that roll DJ. They decide not to kick him back, but it still will be the kill. And this is not the type of game that DJ is used to on the Shadow Shaman. Lacoste, you had said that you wanted to see him go for the full on tri lane and the fact that they didn't is maybe hurting him a little bit here. Yeah, they might uh, consider Rotating Undying on top, even though it's uh, four minutes now. They got their levels. Ursa's level three. Lich is also level three. Same goes for Earth Spirit. Wow, another mistral for Immersion. I mean, they're still finding kills on occasion, but... I think it's I think it's too late. I think at this point, the Nature's Prophet is too much of a threat for your tri lane. Like, it's only going to be another couple of minutes before he gets six, and then... Your tri lane just going to get wiped out. Yeah. They can't kill Nature's Prophet. That's the beauty of this lane. You don't have any kind of a stun. No. If you use open wounds, he's just going to TP out. Yeah, maybe they could rotate the Shaman instead. Try and find that kill into the Nature's Prophet lane. That could be the change up. Um, but somehow, in spite of like the two deaths, DJ is still almost at Arcane Boots. 
This is what happens when you don't have to buy any wards. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's just gonna, he's jungling. Jungling Shadow Shaman. This is what Five happens minutes. when you tell jabs to... I mean, that's pretty nice for him. If he can get this, Jabs is going to come over and soak up some experience, it looks like, but... He's giving Panda solo experience, which is uh, more important. Once he gets to level 6, there's a lot of kill potential. Shadow Shaman doesn't necessarily need to have a lot of level. What if Immersion missed a lot of those uh, rolls. Yeah, he did. And Ice 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 is looking to back away from here. DJ moves into position, gets the shackles under tower, and actually Ice 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 is sticking around. The bait. <laughs> oh, that was extremely greedy. DJ did not have enough mana to use uh, Eater Shock there to finish off the Earth Spirit, and he, he lives. Man, ISSS got so baited. And mid lane starting to be more of a win for the Razor. This is what we've been seeing. It's just once it gets to a certain point, Razor starts to pull yeah. ahead. He just tanks up. With the yeah. Magic Wand, Raindrop, you can't die against Buck. Yeah, and if the puck can't burst you, then he can't ever man up at that point. Even trading hits with the CD, it's not looking amazing for Abed, although he is going to go in for this one and drops the Dream Coil. Apple Ninja needs to battle, but the waning rift. Well, I was just kidding. No, oh, just baiting. I mean, you know? he I mean, can't he has <laughs> unless he gets double damage again. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get the damage, man. MP turns. Afterlife. He doesn't want to leave the shrine. Trance. I just pulled out Kyle. <laughs> what, when you say something and yeah, then, then immediately then the opposite gets, happens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Hopped feeling himself right now with the Bok Box. But he does get stunned, and the catch possibly going to find the kill. They have Waning Rift still. Abed holding on to his orb as well. Decides to turn to maybe try and find the kill. This man oh. is crazy. Abed, out of his mind, won't find that kill, and instead... <gasps> what?! Roll finds the solo immersion. The punch and turns it around, but they get the kill <laughs> with the wrath of nature. <laughs> Nicely done. Shame he couldn't play his route of that one. Yeah, he has no points in phase shift. Mm. And Abed's crazy. I love this guy. He's great. Well, I have to say that even though Immersion hasn't been connecting in all these roles, his rotations have been pretty successful. That's what I called out, that you know, if they're just sitting in the static lanes, Earth Spirit's not going to accomplish as much as the Undying, but if he has the opportunity to just run around, then he's going to do a lot for his team. Even if you make a rotations, you die with Undying Shadow Shaman, but you get XP before you die, it's really worth it, because both of these heroes are really level dependent. Top of the CS right now, we've got the Life Stealer. The Hawk has gotten level six for himself and phase boots. Do have a nice little run around on dying there, doing his dance move. Gotta play that mental game. That's right. The decay walk away. Wow, Prophet already has a Vlads. It's pretty sick. Most farmed here on the map. Oh my god, that Ooh. is a cool move. I like that. We haven't seen this yet from, oh, right. uh, from Gambit. This is cool. And I don't think that this is going to be scouted out. Uh, Fnatic might recognize it in a second, but you kind of just think that the Hawk nah, is jungling. Nah, you don't know about this. No, this is too sneaky. Do you give any consideration to giving this Aegis to the Razor instead of the Ursa? If Razor moves, yeah, they don't want to reveal it. So, early Aegis, sub 10 minutes. And now where do you go with Gambit? Do you just try and take down all of the outer tier one towers? Roll in, if they can find themselves the puck, but he just jaunts his way out of there. Ice 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 shows up, has the Bruce one as well. Gambit, are they in too deep now? They've already taken down the oh, tower, yeah. but they're gonna Break lose the another. Coil. Oh, Immersion in some trouble now afterwards as they pull him back down to Earth and they'll lose two off of it. I was a little bit overconfident, even with the Aegis. I think the biggest thing about this Aegis is they get the gold, they get the experience, and it's going to accelerate the later Roshans, but I still don't think that they're that well equipped to fight Fnatic, who are just having their ultimates come online now. They don't even have the support ultis just yet, but it's not too far away. 
roll forward. Abed was stealing the bounty rune from the Hawk, who was very upset about that. And now he's a DD Ursa. That creep wave is actually coming from the top lane. It's chasing him the whole way. But 10 minutes in, it's just a slight lead for Gambit, five to six, in what's been a pretty close race so far. God, look at all of those creeps just get taken down by Abed. I mean, he's in the middle of everybody. Does have phase shift or back up again in a second. Is he gonna go down here? He decides to not jaunt to it and, well, Gambit, they did not take the bait. Abed goes down. Oh, Inversion try to go for Puck, but instead uh, hit Undying. I mean, got this, him. this got is him. looking really bad for Fnatic. Uh, they're getting chased down all around the map and the Hawk, well, Ice as Ice did the jukes. Yukes. With this lead and now having a Midas on Ursa, this hero's gonna scale going forward. Yeah, that's a free tier one tower on bottom as well. They already managed to kill the tier one tower on mid. So this opens up the entrance to Radiant Jungle. I think the side lanes went much worse for Fnatic than they were expecting, right? Top lane gave away a bunch of kills. DJ's probably a little bit behind where he's used to being on the Shaman at this point. And the Undying, for all of his strength, didn't really manage to do too much uh, on the bottom lane. Sure, they've got good farm on the Lifestealer, but they didn't really shut out the, the Nature's Prophet at all. Well, I think it goes back to, again, what you guys were talking about. In the draft, was expecting this tri lane that just didn't happen, and there was no 1v1. Um, yeah, they needed to pick, if they were going to go for it, they needed to pick a good 1v1 versus the Prophet. But. Shadow Shaman is not the, the really good lane support against Nature's Prophet because he's just sent three ins on you and you can't do what you usually uh, tend to do, especially against the Blightstone. Yeah, but the Prophet pick was was smart, especially because it, it deterred the tri-lane because they didn't want to play the 4v3 tri-lane. It's good against the two supports that they already have and it gave Gambit push that they needed. This, this is a really good Prophet pick. I was a little bit uncertain about it during the draft, but now having seen how it's played out in game, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Fnatic is gonna need a lot of time to recover. Once Lifestealer gets the Radiance, it, it's gonna be so much easier for them to fight, but it's gonna take another seven, eight minutes uh, for MP to farm this. He didn't die, he participated in two kills. So Puck is gonna be the one trying to buy buy some time, make make the action, and the Brewmaster is also building towards the uh, Hand of Midas, but has Vlad, so they can actually fight with it. And Abed, in spite of going for a couple of these early, just sort of battle-oriented items, the three Null Tallies, a bottle, is almost at a Blink Dagger, uh, just by taking down all those treants and such, so. They do still have really good team fight that Gambit need to respect. Yeah. Like, the... the we haven't actually seen what Fnatic can do now that their two supports have uh, their ults as well. I think if they deploy, the, especially if they fight near a cliff where they can put the tombstone on the high ground, that's going to be so difficult for Gambit to deal with. Smoke up there by Fnatic. And I guess that again goes back to what we've been talking about this entire tournament, right? You have this one team that's going for the winning of the lanes. Uh, as hard as possible, and then afterwards going for Midas. And Fnatic have gone for much more of the, let's try and fight you after the lanes are done and see if we can deal with the lead that you're building up. Ursa should be careful. 10 seconds left on Aegis. He has enough money to buy a Blink Dagger. It has to be aware. But that Fnatic smoke really didn't bear any fruit at all. Basically just walked to a lane and then left afterwards. So, as you said, Aegis done. I think Fnatic is fine, but just not doing anything. They would love to get levels on Undying and Shadow Shaman, but the game is in this kind of a state where they're fine with just delaying. Puck has a Blink Dagger. I expect him to try to grab one more smoke, get a kill, and maybe take take a mid tower. It's um, on half HP. But the good thing about Gambit is that they managed to take down first Roche uh, really early. So the, the second Roche with Cheese and Aegis is going to spawn really quickly. Oh, Puck. Yoink. <laughs> Got the bounty rune, but the roll not on the mark and the blink away afterwards. It's not the best blink reveal in the world, 
But it works. That looks like that is going to be Abed just getting out of there. Ursa. Hexed. Caught for the moment. Hasn't raged, though, and he just walks away. Phase boots. Easy peasy. So, yeah, again, you have this blink dagger on the puck. Is there any worry that he's not going to scale since he didn't go for a Midas? Uh, I think it's okay. I think that, like, Puck is still just going to scale even if he gets levels. He's going to be shoving waves a lot this game. Like we were saying earlier, there isn't really that much to catch and punish the Puck uh, this game other than like a random Earth Spirit silence, but that's even difficult to land. So I think he's just going to get farmed by utilizing the Blink Dagger. You can even think about the Blink Dagger as kind of a farming item because it's going to let him push waves that right. he otherwise wouldn't be able to get. Yeah, he just needs to bring a lot of clarities and uh, he's already preparing Void Stone, Yield Scepter, mm -hmm. so that he can't die. It's really good against the Ursa to use the Enrage time in the left. Also, Nature's Prophet has Orchid queued up, so that's his defensive item. Well, Jabs, he's just gonna dance his problems away. Drop one Piggy before he dies. I like this from Fnatic, though. I think it would be really stupid for them to force a fight right now. Their lifestealer is going to get a lot stronger by waiting. Uh, the panda is also going to get reasonably strong. And they don't, I don't think they have clear issues if this goes late. So better for them to just relax because otherwise they could just lose a fight to the, to the Ursa. Uh, the Hawk's very strong at this point. Gambit's overall lineup is, is looking pretty darn good. Gambit are still building up a lead just by controlling the map. You can see that they're still able to hold on to their own jungle while pressuring in the Radiant jungle. And it is going to be about what timing Gambit want to hit relative to when that comes on, the uh, Radiance comes online for the Lifestealer. So Aetherlens done for the Shadow Shaman. That Radiant's still a couple thousand gold away for the Life Stealer. Oh, Jabs. All right. He's out of there. Uh, that ward is not going to be scattered. All right, they drop us another Sentry Ward. Now they take it down. And jump in, Life Stealer Bomb. Say hello, Shackles on the low ground as well. Ursa not getting a chance to do anything at all. Even in Rage, Dahak is eventually going to die. Happens just like that. Very nicely done. Ward baited. And the Roche, sadly for Fnatic, is going to spawn in a minute and a half. Uh, they still have Shadow Shaman wards. Immersion just gets out of there. And Abed blinks forward to try and find the kill. But now he's in a little bit of trouble. They will take down that Earth Spirit. But Abed gets taken down as well by the Nature's Prophet, TPing in on top of him. A DD for Afterlife, trying to kill off Ice Ice Ice. But Ice 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 is just going to walk away. Immersion buys back. Ice 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 juking to the right. They thought he went the other way. <laughs> Get inside, Ooh. gets inside this little house of snakes with face boots and TP out. Okay, he doesn't have a TP for 25 and seconds. And Jabs just goes down. He wanted to get the last two on that tower. Man. Okay, well, it started really, really, really well for Fnatic, and then they chased for some more and didn't block the roll, and then they lost two heroes kind of for free. That was a little bit weird. The good thing is, okay, they managed to grab... All oh, right, <laughs> Courier died to Serpent Wards. What? <laughs> Sorry, don't give up. Oh FNG's going to be playing Courier for a little while here. There was... Okay, there was not. Oh, I was afraid that there was a full Orchid in Courier. Nature's Prophet got it. Don't use Courier if you don't trust your teammates. Good thing about the previous fight is that Lifestealer got uh, both of those kills, so he's getting closer to Radiance. It's gonna be 20 minute Radiance. This is a good timing. That double kill really helped him out, like you said. Well, and uh, as much as we sort of talked about the initiation that could come from the Ursa blowing somebody up really fast, it's really much more Abed and this Lifestealer together oh, that's gonna, gonna do go it. For Ursa. You can see he does not have an answer to this right now. You need a BKB, you need Aghanims or something. I don't know, but Ursa needs it. He's going for the BKB, I but him, so. in the meantime, Gambit, need to back away from this one. So too will Fnatic. But this is Roche that has respawned. The seeds of fortune. 
It was a nice pickoff to get the bot time for Primal Split to come back off cooldown. Should be able to get all of their ultimates up before too long, and that life stealer with the radiance is going to be so much more survivable against what Gambit have. And Abed has his Yules now, so the Orchid is the Orchid's still going to be good on the Nature's Prophet, but it's not going to completely obliterate the puck the way that it would if uh, he was like an item ahead of him. Right. Blink Dagger done for this Brewmaster after going to that early Midas. Nice He's going to scale with this kind of a build. Yeah. A lot of damage. He's going to get experience. All his talents are extremely good. What do you aim for this game? Do, are you playing the, the ulti build with the primal split health and the cooldown, or are you getting... He might build like right click and auras. Okay. Even getting Heaven's Halberd would be really nice. Mm. Shadow Shaman Blink Dagger done with the Life Stealer surprise inside. God, I, and like, this Ursa, I mean, as good as it has looked for them in the past, they need to find the initiation themselves. They've got jumped on twice by this puck. And Immersion, can, like, he is going to be the one that gets taken out now. The oh. Radiant's out there. And the Hawk, going to turn and see if he can fight this, catches out on the DJ, does bring him down. And at BC, and if they can turn this as well, Chain Frost bouncing around between the Brulings as well as Jabs. And he just keeps on taking that one through. Dahak trying to run away. He's already used the Enrage. And eventually they bring down the Bear Man. FNG also low. Apple Ninja trying to do what he can. They buy back on the Ursa. Apple Ninja taking a MP for a walk, but they have the lift up there. And well, that is going to maybe be a kill on Ice Ice Ice. He's walking Miss. away. The missed chance. Is it going to be enough? Silence out as well. But they finally find that kill. Three dead. Abed just trying to kill off this creep wave, but it's when the Roche that yeah, Gambit want to go. Good buyback from the Hawk. They, he realized that they're going to win that fight. He he buys back and uh, secures the Roshan. That's Cheese and Aegis. Can they actually fight? Lifestealer has another infest. Yeah. And Puck is there. They've got to be careful. Abed thinking about diving into this one. Does have the blink afterwards, but that's going to be the jump. They already got the Aegis. But with the wards down, can they do this on Fnatic? Afterlife rain away. The Hawk is going to go down here, but now the rest of Gambit has shown up as well. Are they going to be able to find any kills? Apo Ninja Jeez. pops the cheese, turning around, finding MP. Another round of shackles, but DJ under fire and will end up dying here, it looks like. Oh no, blink away! Uh, but they have the Nature's Prophet up on top, finds jabs. They've got their eyes set here, and with the soul burn from the Orchid, it's a triple kill for Afterlife. Afterlife is owning this game. This is crazy. Get that bonus gold, why not? Plus 200. Uh, nice attempt by Fnatic, but the cheese usage from Affininja was so nice. And like, really good use of the buybacks again. Uh, well, yeah. and of course, just respawning also, but you see here the fight around the shrine. Fnatic didn't want to buy back on their heroes to get back into the engagement. They took Cheese and Aegis off Gambit. So the next fight is going to be full 5-on-5. Five five. I am a little bit afraid of what happens for Gambit if the Prophet or the Razor is the one that gets jumped and they just kind of kite the Ursa. Because so far, they've a lot of these fights have started by just blowing up the Ursa. But I think if they find one of the higher value targets instead, then the team fight looks much worse for Gambit. I don't think that the Ursa is actually... He's a valuable target, but I don't think he's the most valuable target. Yeah, they can't jump him anymore. He has a BKB right now, unless they jump him with Shadow Shaman. Right. Mm. They see Afterlife. This would be a huge kill. And they're moving in for him. Find the Hex, find the Shackles. This is the strength of Shadow Shaman. Like, He's I, so tanky, man. With that 10 extra armor from level 15 talent. But it's kind of all for naught if they don't have somebody to save him. And they don't. Yeah. And the Prophet will start to scale off a little bit. I mean, his next couple of items will probably be big, but uh, he does feel like he's starting to peak a bit. But Gambit's still looking for a strong timing with these multiple BKBs. The Brewmaster and the Radiance are both really annoying for now, but once they have the multi BKB that they're building for, all of a sudden Ice 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 is not going to be nearly as much of a problem. 
Well, I think that they have one of them coming out right now on the courier for Afo Ninja. Because a lot of Fnatic's team fight is magical. So if they can just ignore oh. the Brewmaster and the Puck. Abed, FNG spots him out here also. He's keeping them out of the fight. At least for now, as it looks like they're going to try and wrap around and catch somebody here at the Hawk. Looking for the opening. It's only going to be jabs, though. Although Nature's Prophet did find the Life Sealer. They couldn't control him. So they get the kill on the Undying, and that's it. I like the, well, I like the boost of travel on the puck if it's the right. I, I, I have this sense that Fnatic feel confident going late game and the boots of travel are just going to let him do more of what he's already been doing, which is shove the side lanes and buy more time. Uh, it, it remains to be tested whether or not Fnatic's late game is actually uh, superior to Gambit's, but that's the way that they're playing. Like if they felt that they needed to fight right this second, then I think that 2k gold would be better spent building the Aghanim Scepter, but it seems to me that Abed's read on this game is that they can start to take this a little bit later, or that, right, they need to delay a bit past this BKB timing. They're going to have three ten seconds BKB yeah, in the next so minute, strong. so it's going to be really hard for Fnatic to fight. A lot of magical damage. They basically have no right clicks besides Life Stealer. And he's gonna, there's a bunch of armor on the Prophet. He's gonna get static links. Uh, 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 all right. That's a nine second BKB. Two 10 second BKBs and one wow. nine second <laughs> BKB. <laughs> and Avenger has just, he's got PTSD from the last couple of jumps. I know, right? <laughs> it's just, just, as soon as he sees the puck. I'm surprised. Wait, were there any tips for that? No, no I don't, I'm not sure so. if uh, Fnatic spotted it. Oh, uh, maybe they didn't see it. So yeah. maybe they still think it's a 10 second BKB. Well, 2,000 gold lead still for Gambit. And it's really a lot more than that, considering the Midas is at play uh, on the side of Fnatic. There Granted, was, I guess there are there two. An, is there an uneven number of Midas's? No, there's, there's two Midas's. Perfectly actually. balanced. All right, fair enough. Jeez, this is a freaking patch. <laughs> I think actually, what, though, that what you've been talking about is right. That the oh, if they nice. can find this life stealer with Orchid. They got him there, able to find him in the Sprout and Shadow Shaman. No way to help out his buddy. MP goes down. MP staying there for way too long. Doesn't have Manta style, so he should farm in a different uh, part of the map. There was no teammates behind him. An immersion. They've got the haste turn, and DJ passes by the ward. They spot him out. Ghost Scepter ain't gonna save you now. So they roll forward and find the kill, and just running from lane to lane to lane, finding kills, and now pushing out the mid. They're gonna try and take this tier two. Very nice cross map movement. All right, I've been cutting creeps next to the tier three tower. Unfortunately, top lane's already pushing in, as is mid. It's an Aghanim Scepter done for the puck. That's going to be answer for their BKBs. Yeah. If they want to kill them, I think he still needs like a force staff as well though, right? Then he can blink coil and force staff to break it instantly. Yeah. And then they can kill them before they get the BKB off. Because they still need the they still they still need the magical damage to actually kill these heroes, I'm pretty sure. Well, what do you do with this timing now from Gambit? It is still a little bit before Roche is going to respawn, about a minute until it's capable of respawning. But maybe try and find another pickoff in that time. Yeah, all yeah. the wards drop down. I mean, they would like to gank to their vision, but that ward bottom has already kind of been scouted. But it's not scouted, but they know that there's roughly vision down there because of the way that the Shadow Shaman died earlier. They see Abed, see all of Fnatic, and Gambit thinking about this. It's, it's not an easy initiation, though. Mm -hmm. And everybody from Fnatic is here. Fnatic doing the same thing as their previous series, just fighting on the, the shrine. The High ground, plus vision, plus sentries, plus the shrine. They're taking advantage of every 
everything that they can on the map to equalize the fact that they're down on gold and these triple BKBs are going to be hard to deal with. This is going to be a huge pickup if Nature's Prophet finishes uh, Nullifier, so they can't uh, use items. Extremely good against Buck. Life Stealer, he can't Manta. Oh, they have an Infest Bomb from Abed if they step too far forward. DJ finds the Shackles up on the high ground. Go Scepter, but he has to break it in a second, and FNG throws out the Chain Frost, bouncing back and forth, but the BKBs are already out and trying to TP away. Shaman, does he get out of there? No. DJ the first one to fall, and now the Lich to follow. It looks like the rest of Gambit is going to need to back out of there, but Afterlife finding his kill onto Jab. So the two supports go down and just going to Shadow Blade his way out. Brewmaster had Dust if he want. I don't know if he noticed. They could have grabbed the kill on that uh, Nature's Prophet. Yeah. Magic Immunity just kind of feels like invulnerability for Gambit at the moment. Uh, they they brought down Affinitia, what, to like a third HP? Yeah. And then they managed to interrupt the shackles, and as soon as he pressed BKB, he just stopped taking any damage. Dyer's top it was is under really attack. brutal. Rush back up in Oh, 30. and there's that nullifier. That's yeah, big. Dyer's top tower has been denied. Man, Afterlife has been playing like such a beast this tournament. Yeah. I think this is the best I've ever seen him at a tournament. He's really looking phenomenal. The Hawk solid on his hero pool as well, but to me, the the standout player for Gambit has really been Afterlife. But it's, it's not going to win this game. It's still not over yet. Nullifier also in queue for the Ursa, so two rounds of it, potentially. It's going to be so hard to fight into two Nullifiers. Yeah. They need four staff so they can save their own teammates, Lincoln Spheres, Lotus Orbs, and... Uh, it's going to be tough to farm all those items. Oh, looking for this puck, but Abed getting out the roll. Woo! Oh, it was just a little bit off the mark there, and BKB immediate reaction to Ice Ice. Ice is trying to run away, but he's just getting clunked. That Ooh. is going to be the BKB used for both of them. Probably more important for the Ursa, though. Oh, they're going to use the shrine. Okay. I thought they might just like throw an open wounds on a creep and then let Ice 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 Midas it. But never mind, they've used that shrine now, so they've lost a little bit of that advantage there. I think that's actually kind of a misplay. Yeah, very valuable having those shrines, particularly when they've got these couple of heroes that really could use that mana regen. Yeah, and this is like an area that they can they can kite back to. So. Gem on the puck, ensuring that they have good vision. Also, I think the Nullifier on Ursa is maybe overkill. I think the Abyssal Blade might be I can preferable. still get both. This Curry in the Roche Pit also is doing so much for them. Like, just getting that extra little bit of vision, and it spotted out the Ursa in there, I think, also. Mm. Fnatic are always good with the Courier plays. I, do you guys remember the Ice 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 uh, Courier bait, like sending the Courier somewhere else? Uh -oh. As if it was delivering an item? Radiant yeah. Such a no. Uh, no? I just <laughs> 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 like, you need to be more specific. Scan's going to connect? Yeah, they uh, also did realize, though, that the Radiance was hitting those creeps when they were passing by it. So Gambit should realize that Fnatic are down here on the Logar, and they're baiting at Afo Ninja. Pops the BKB, immediate reaction. DJ forced to drop the wards immediately, and there's no way that he can find any type of shackles afterwards. Can they kill off FNG? MP is on top of it now. Lifestealer just running away as they're fully committed to the spite, though. The fear comes out. FNG still living for the moment. Muted and killed off. That was beautifully baited by Gambit, and now Ice 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 possibly going to die in the duration of his ult here, maybe just afterwards, as they still want to run him down here as well. Finds the kill to hawk on it. Oh, Nature's Prophet is already behind them. That's going to be Nullifier. Uh, this is dangerous. That's a oh, die the back. Sprout coming from Afterlife, blocking him off, and now controlling. Can they kill off Afterlife? Four staff up to the high ground. The Radiance Burn is coming through. Is it going to be enough to take him down? No! Afterlife gets out the buyback for what? Man, that was not Sprout, that was Fisher. Oh my goodness. And now he TP's back in. Oh, Puck, what you gonna do? He's in the catch and going to find the kill yet again. They're gonna Afterlife. lose Jim. Oh my god, that, that might just be the game right there. 
Oh, look at the gold change for buybacks. There was oh. there was such a sick silence. I think it was from immersion in that fight. Abed's dream coil got extremely delayed. Like by the time he got the dream coil out, the two supports were pretty much already dead. Uh, to Gambit's cores. Usually when like we talk, we praise a, a player, they immediately feed terribly. Afterlife just had the best play of the tournament, I think. That was really nice. They need to initiate before they pop a BKB with Shadow Shaman to try to burst one target uh, during Hex or Shackles. Otherwise, they need to wait until their BKBs are down and try to engage into a fight after. Just try to stall the fight. The problem so is they don't have any kind of a save. No save items, no saving abilities. Now the immediate Hex. They've got the Nullifier on him. Ice 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 gonna hit the deck. And that is a death with no buyback. Jab's getting ran at underneath the Fountain Gambit. Came here to play in this upper bracket matchup. And Shane Frost not really bouncing all that much. It looks like they are gonna get the kickback, but it is gonna Jeez. be the cheese afterwards eaten. So Urza survives. Oh, Coil under three though. Save your buddy syndrome. Has it turned around in the problem? A silence there, Yule Scepter. Keep Puck alive, but the nullifier ponies are back down. Meanwhile, though, the phase shift to walk away, trying to find that kill. Afterlife, not going to be able to chase that puck any further forward. And they actually kill off the Courier, which was going to pick up the gem. Abed trying Arisa's to TP back in. into this one. And there he is right on top of one, the Ghost Scepter, the Hex. DJ playing his heart out here. They do burn through the Aegis and MP, seeing if he can run down this Ursa. But in a second, they're going to be coming back again. They find the Shackles onto Razor, and he Ursa has get left up again. He's going to turn it back around with the BKB, has ulti up, and just going to TP out of there. Oh, man, he used Refresh. Fresh shard to use a BKB oh, and after life. out. That's a problem here. And are they going to finally find this Nature's Prophet that's caused so many problems for them? Yes, they do. Man, DJ's such a great player. His positioning, he's, he's just controlling everything. Yeah, and they, they can't quite get to him. He's sitting there shackling the Razor the entire time after he pops up from the ages. And you can see that Nature's Prophet is walking towards the base because he wants to use the Orchid to interrupt it, but he just can't find him. And they end up expending even more resources. No one fought back in that fight. So yeah. they won fight five versus Cheese, Aegis, and Refresher Shard. It's true, but you still look at the graph of the net worth at this point in the game, and it is Man, such I want a huge oh, drop shut off. shut up, Gabe. I want that free merge from from, <laughs> from tonight. <laughs> oh my god. The ultimate sellout for what cost oh it's god. happening. <laughs> so they have a four staff now, and Puck, uh, he can break the coil. That's the guy that they got to play it here. So 38 minutes, and Fnatic, after a one fight, getting their feet back under them, but it's a long road that they have to travel to really pull all the way back into this game. And it looks like, at least for now, we might have a little bit of a stall. Do you wait until the next Roche if you're Gambit? Do you just try and consolidate your lead? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Nature's Prophet is so jacked. Level 25 has full Blood Thor Nullifier. That's the, that's the combo that you want to see on your core Prophet. Uh, no teleportation cooldown either. Yeah, that's Razor's nice. 25 as well, 100 attack speed. Ursa getting close to his 25. Looks like they want to try and end this right now, but again, DJ there with the Hex immediately afterwards. Aquaninja able to pop the BKB MP lane into one. Can they kill off this Earth Spirit? Yes, they will be able to, An Immersion has to run away. Actually, no, he gets out of there. Okay, DJ, the roll in, interrupted, and the Shackles, the Hex, they find that kill. Lift up onto the Shackles Lich and the Hop ready. in some problem, but in the meantime, Afterlife trying to go for some split push, it's not going to be enough and they're just going to find themselves another kill. So Gambit lose three. Afterlife TP'd in to kill the tombstone on the high ground and then just TP'd away from the fight. Yeah. Didn't even want anything to do with that. That was, that was very weird to me. Well, it seems weird because it's like the, the, the decision to run in and take the fight to begin with, and then not everybody's on the same page, I guess. Yeah, and Fnatic were already, like, established. Right. And they got the gem back. Undying has it. 
I love the build on Fnatic. Two force staffs, undying building one, so they can save people from Ursa once he initiates with the nullifier bashers to get people out of the sprout. Break some dream coil. Yeah. Very nice. And suddenly, a DD rune on this life stealer and hitting this tower. Lifestealer might consider getting the Lincoln Spear in this game against Static Link, against oh, those Nullifiers. Nature's Prophet, Afterlife versus DJ, and DJ coming out on top here as he found his man and is going to take him down. All He's right. level 20. Extra 2.5 two point, uh, two point, uh, second shackle duration. He, he can basically perma, perma hex and shackle people. The Caster Curse just took a few minutes to set in, guys. That's it's, right. <laughs> he has a buyback, though. I mean, uh, it makes sense that you're trying to like make whatever room for your team po you possibly can, but if you give up your life, now it's suddenly it's 70 five seconds on five you have to hold. With your team. When, like we have, yeah. the last two fights have not been proper five on fives. Chain Frost used out, but they used the wards as well. Tier three tower is down. There is no split push happening. Fnatic are on their high ground and taking a lane of Rax. Look at DJ. Lich uses Frost Shield on melee Rax as he immediately focuses the ranged ones. Mm. Look at the cost in his new hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they find the hex here as well. Fully controlled is going to be ice, 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 and he does die as they chase forward for more. Able to find one. That's only jabs. Not the best in the world. Immersion wanted to find more there and does not have any more stones to roll with here, it looks like. Let's get one more in a second. Four staff up as well, but I can't catch anybody. Oh, yeah. Puck level 25, 420. GPM. Just, oh. just watch those numbers climb. Oh. All right. Isis, Isis Ice didn't skill anything. He's level 21. He's saving a point to see where he wants to go for. Oh, yeah. He has the AC queued up right now. I guess you can take one more fight and see if your pandas actually die and then kind of decide. Because like a basher build can be pretty sick on Brewmaster. You get Abyssal Blade, yeah. Blink, BKB, Abyssal. Just start smacking people. They need to talk to each other. Both Lifestealer and Panda have uh, AC queued up. Hmm. Hmm. Right, well, Lifestealer is already picking it up. Yeah. I wonder if that does sort of signal that they're going to go for the right click build on the Panda then. Seems likely. Uh, it, it, it's also just a good aura no. to be carrying anyway. Like if, even if you're playing for the, you went for the 1500 HP to yeah. primal split units. Yeah, so and he's gonna go for octarine core. Yeah. yeah, okay. So pretty much permanent pandas. I feel like they could use Lotus Orb. It's such a bold item this game against Static Link. Remove the silence, a nullifier, mm. a Lich Ulti, okay. silence from Nature's Prophet. Yeah, Not so sure more ways to buff it. up their uh, life stealer would be great. God, that puck gold. Just going off the charts. You can get a moon shard, I guess, for teammates later on. Yeah. It's pretty good on the panda and the life stealer. So 43 minutes, 10,000 gold lead. That starts to matter less and less as we get into the later stages of this game. That rage duration for the life stealer. What becomes more vital is the buybacks for everybody. And rage. 80% status resistance. And Fnatic playing on their high ground. Gambit playing in the mid lane. A little bit vulnerable here. Oh, Yule Scepter lift up. Still has BKB and Enrage, but Abed just playing with him. Takes off that arcane rune. Haste. Profits just everywhere. <laughs> Taking all the remaining farm on the map can be with this team anytime. I mean, that is one nice part about this. If you have all of Fnatic playing in one area, then Profit can just head to that other side of the map and doesn't have to worry about not being able to enter in the fight. Mm -hmm. Well, he has to be worried about DJ, though. If right. He finds him again. Seen exactly what happens in that situation. You're isolated against Shadow Shaman. Doesn't matter oh, if man. you have 40k net worth, you're getting chain stunned forever. Yeah. Another courier. Okay, they popped the courier shield. Yeah. They don't know it's there. They found the spot for it, but the nature's profit. Oh, that was from Gambit anyways, so yeah, that doesn't reveal anything. Abed 
Move in position. What do they find? They courier scouts him out and they get the kill. That's a, actually That's a big so kill. Sick. Yeah, Even though it's position five, the look at it, they put it back does again. so much. The courier, th this courier usage is so good. MVP courier. And he's gonna kick through and F1 Ninja doesn't quite get the vision there with the Shiva's guard. Ice 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 rolls they in, has the BKB out immediately and they found and killed off Afterlife in the back lines. Lift up now onto Razor. Can they take the secondary fight? They do a buyback on Nature's Prophet if he wants to get into this one. But NJ pops the BKB, decides to walk away. All these Tombstone Zombies, though, chasing him down and slowing this Razor and the War Trap war afterwards. Trap. In some trouble, Chain Frost to try and do something, but it's doing nothing. And they kill off this Razor as well. Jabs is also very low. And one by one by one, Gambit are dropping. The Prophet's not doing anything in these fights. Just dying every time. He's got all this net worth and just can't do anything with it, seemingly. Everyone has a buyback right now, besides uh, Lich, who bought back in the previous fight. That's the downside of having a core profit, even just support profit, because he steals a lot of farm from everyone by trying to shove out the waves using ulti. I, you know, the other thing that's really scary about this is that this is Refresher Shard. DJ, if he wants it, is just a couple hundred gold away from Agonims. Like, I, double wards later on. This is really scary for Gambit. They don't have good ways to deal with all of those wards if they just drop them on the tower. Shaman's one of those... One of those support heroes that can just win the game all by himself in the late, later stages. I mean, DJ's been doing it for his team already. They do take down Abed, but it seems like all of the big plays this game from Fnatic over the past five or so minutes have been off the back of DJ. That man wants a Mercedes. Ice 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 really wants that AC. Queued up again, even though they have one. <laughs> He's gonna tell Life Stealer to sell it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, what else does he get? What are the useful auras are there at this stage of the game? She was guard. Yeah. Yeah. She was he he could get Lotus Orb. He could, he could, it's armor he for him. He could build him. a hex as well. Lotus Orb on Earth Spirit. And Abyssal for the Life Stealer as well. A Blink Prophet so he can get that initiation too. Travels for DJ. Hmm. Okay. I like this though. Prophet doesn't need boots anymore. Oh, he, he got rid of the boots uh, yeah. one item earlier. He sold the uh, Shadow Blade right. to get a Blink Dagger. I think he doesn't need Lads anymore. No, probably not. If they really desperately need the Vlads, the Lich or the Earth Spirit or something could buy it. Yeah, just tell Lich to buy Lads with 300 gold. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Earth Spirit has <laughs> GPM so talent, sad. so he, he can buy one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, poor Lich. Needs to get those levels up too. Some of those later talents are pretty cool for him. The frost shield duration and then giving the 60 HP regen if you get to 25. So 48 minutes into this one, it's down to just a 3000 gold lead. For a long time, Nature's Prophet felt like he was the difference maker for Gambit. Now he's the difference maker again, but it's because Fnatic are winning the fights. He's not able to do much. Or down on the high ground in the Tinker spot. They've got eyes on Ice Ice Ice, but the rest of the team is here. Can Ice 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 stay alive? The Force Staff comes out, saving him. A secondary Force Staff. They want to find that kill, but the Brewmaster is not going down. And now they've fully committed onto it. And Gambit, can they turn this back around? MP trying to run away. They get the split off. Ice 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 chasing forward for this one. They've already lost the Lich. And now Afterlife, does he get out of there in time? He is going to be able to escape. Oh, they had no, no vision. Force Staffs were on cooldown, so they couldn't cut the tree with it and they will find this kill on a razor but fully committing onto that brewmaster you have to find the kill and it didn't happen yeah really nice counter initiation oh man these team fights are now just no longer going gambit's way it seems the prophet is not a hero that's equipped to just stand and auto attack really feels like he's just getting kited every time and they've only got the one lane of Rex, so it's not, I mean, it's equalized too. And I mean, that's the thing, right? Like it, it hasn't even been huge fights back and forth, but 
Again, keeping their eyes on the net worth graph and the experience graph, it's 20,000 net worth, uh, 25,000 experience just about. And it's only been, what, a little too over 12 minutes or so? So Fnatic moving up onto high ground now. Immersion just trying to clear through this creep wave. They're going to chain Frost for two creeps. But I mean, if whatever works, Hex out, MP, thinking about chasing. Don't go for it. They get the Courier kill by virtue of Afterlife. Gonna TP. One last on the Courier. Don't doubt him now next. I mean, the Courier's been scouting for him earlier, but they don't want to use this Razor buyback if they can afford to not use it. Frost Shield onto the melee barracks, and they're just going to end up giving oh, up this no. range, I think. And they get him, DJ, yet again, every time this man does it. And Nature's Prophet feeling like he's going to need an Aeon Disc because this Shackles lasts forever. And in the meantime, Fnatic, they're still taking this fight. They, they, they're going to lose another. Immersion went down to Hawk, going to pop the Phase Blitz and run away from those wards. But another lift up onto this Lich. And Ice 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 trying to escape in the duration of his ulti afterlife. Running forward, has been able to find MP, but MP is still living through all of this. Muted up, this Razor is caught. He is shackled. There is no way for them to break this right now. DJ finally going to be pulled back, but that just leads into the coil. And Da Hawk trying to chase. He's going to be actually able to get away from that with the status resistance from Enrage. Apple Ninja going down. They find themselves another kill force in mass buyback and they do have a buyback still on ursa but gambit have already expended so much and fanatic are looking strong looks like they won't use any more buyback since it's a tier two bottom Aegis is gone. DJ bought back in that fight it feels like they want to close out this game they want to get those uh, mega creeps there's still a tier two unfortunately that they have to get through Dyer's bottom so it's still not over just attack. yet, but what a turnaround. Fnatic finding those crucial kills on the Nature's Profit Dyer's time and time again has just kind of won them the game seemingly. And now they do find Puck, so right, Afterlife nice. getting big kills. Much needed. Yeah, but he can't, he needs to get the heck out of here. Oh, oh no. DJ, he's found his man in the TP back. Oh, BKB and now running away. Actually, turning to fight Afterlife, wanting to take them all down. Abed, is they going to be able to find this kill? Afterlife, he's stuck around for too long now, and the rest of Fnatic has shown up. They break Snap. it and break him. Oh, two minutes without Nature's Prophet. <laughs> two minutes without Shadow Shaman as well. DJ feeling pretty good about that. This game could go both ways. If someone makes a mistake, they die without a buyback. The yeah. only buyback right now for the Dyer is on Ursa. <laughs> We're getting into pretty treacherous territory for both teams. They got to watch that Nature's Profit respawn time Dyer's as well. Actually, both respawn timers pretty relevant. We've also got to travel on DJ. Double so. gem plus five sentries on Undying. You can't hide from this man. <laughs> and they sees everything. They do know that there is no buyback on the Nature's Profit. Again, the win here in the full best of three series would be top four. And Immersion just going to back away, but they have the lift up onto Razor already, and they're just going to commit onto this building. Frost Shield came out a little bit too late, and it is just going to drop, and now they can focus down the second set. This is looking to be Megas. They don't have an answer for this here. Dahawk jumps in. The Abyssal Blade, though, controlling this Ursa. Now the Coil onto two, Enrage, and trying to walk away through it, which does mean that he's able to walk away afterwards. But this Razor still controlled. BKB popped. They haven't taken down the racks as of yet. Now trying to steal some damage, but the Force Staff keeping MP away and Immersion forced to run out of there afterwards. Tombstone. Brewmaster up as well. ready in five. Still 30 seconds until this Nature's Prophet is back up and MP jumps forward. A good Lotus Orb. Able to find that secondary stun. And now this Ursa under fire, under control, buys back immediately. Time to run away from there. Chain Frost bouncing. Not doing all that much damage. Neither is this. FNG and well, chase forward for more. Dahak gets the stun. Four staff away again, and they do take down the Lich. Immediately buys back afterwards. Immersion trying to do damage in the backline of Abed, but can't quite find it. Ice 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 alive again. He will have his ulti in 15 seconds if he can wait out that long. Also has the cheese available. Jumps forward, finds the kill. That's Razor game. is dead. They have the Nature's Prophet, but it is too late. And Fnatic are going to take game number one. Oh, man. Man, you, you can feel the difference which team is tier one, which team is tier two. Like, this is just beautiful Dota to watch. DJ, man, what a player. Yeah, DJ, and then all of the four staff plays from the rest of Fnatic. I feel like once they had those two or three four staffs yeah. online, that 
kind of won them the game. The Ursa was getting kited constantly. Uh, once the BKB started to wear down as well, Ice 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 was just wasting Razor's time constantly. Like, the Lifestealer was struggling in fights when the Razor was just latching onto him, and then as soon as they had the Force Stabs, there was never another, like, 50-plus damage static link for the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, they really did really well. Man, what a game number one, too. I, I, I will say that I think we're going to see that Shadow Shaman band out. I, I think so, yeah. I don't think you let that through. <laughs> um, but we're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, because game number two is going to be right around the corner. We got a great series and a great game, too, probably coming up as well. Fnatic versus Gambit. Back right after this.